When the holidays roll around, we condition ourselves to indulge in tasty treats, high fat, high sugar goodies. But as we watch the scales tipping in a scary direction, we know we need to get our health back on track. Here to share how we can detox from the spoils of the season is Dr. Susan Pierce Thompson. She is also founder of Brightline Eating and the author of the new book, Resume. It's great to have you. Thanks, Layla. Great to be here with you. So why is food addiction harder to beat than a lot of other addictions? Yeah, it's an interesting question, Layla. I had personal experience with this. I was actually a drug addict in my teenage years. And I mean a serious drug addict, crystal meth, crack cocaine, dropped out of high school, resorted to prostitution. I got clean and sober when I was 20. And my addiction hopscotched over to food. I was obese by my mid 20s. And I found food harder to kick even than crack cocaine. That led me to get my PhD trying to understand what was going on with my brain. And here we are. The, the cravings are so strong that you can't ignore them. You know, so yeah. for, for a lot of people who don't have a food addiction, they can easily say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to eat that thing or whatever it is that is kind of their vice. But when you actually have a food addiction, it becomes almost to the point where it doesn't even matter how it tastes, just that yeah. you need to be filling yourself with something. It's so true. And what you just said is really important, Layla. Not everyone has a brain that's susceptible to food addiction. A lot of people get off scot-free and they can have one cookie and leave it alone. They can get back on track in January, um, you know, shed the couple of pounds that they put on over the holidays, no problem. But for some of us, it truly is an addiction. And it's hardest because it's socially pressured to eat, right? No one's pressuring me now to smoke crack anymore, right? Um, and I could drive to work without being triggered to shoot heroin or uh, to smoke cigarettes. But just a simple thing like a drive to work is littered with cues to eat addictive foods, uh, billboards and road signs and um, you know the, the branding labels and logos of all the stores and shops and restaurants um, you can't even check out at the grocery store or even the hardware store mm -hmm. without being triggered to eat uh, candy bars. So it's really everywhere and it's pushed on us, right? I say no thank you to champagne at New Year's Eve and people are so respectful. I say, oh no, thank you, I don't drink. And they trip over themselves to get me some seltzer water to drink instead for the toast. But if you try to say, no, thank you, I don't eat sugar, um, on Thanksgiving, um, just watch how people react to you saying that you don't eat sugar. So food addiction is not understood and it's not respected in our society. And yet three quarters of us are overweight or obese um, and the number just keeps climbing. And you know more people are gonna die of their food addiction than anything else, frankly. And, and what is it about sugar that is so tied to our, our mental state, though? Uh, that, mm. And I've noticed this myself, is that when I have too much sugar, a lot of people talk about having sugar highs. I have quite the opposite. The way I react to having sugar, it actually depletes my energy. And you do feel kind of in a depressed state. So what is tied to, what, what ties those two things together? Yes, the sugar blues, they're very, very real. Sugar, like alcohol, is a depressant. And research shows that the more sugar you eat, the more likely you are to have both depression and anxiety. And the converse is also true. The more fruits and vegetables you eat, up to seven servings a day, mm -hmm. the happier you are. And in fact, research shows that that happens even just the next day. Eating a lot of vegetables today predicts a happy day tomorrow. So it's an immediate effect. Interesting, interesting. And for someone who is trying to kick the habit of sugar, where should they begin? Because a lot of times, of course, we're coming up on a new year. It's the time when we make resolutions. We are, you know, going at full steam ahead. But to quit cold turkey is probably not the best way to deal with it. So how do you start minimizing the amount of sugar that you eat day by day, week by week, and month to month? Well, it's interesting. Um, you just said that uh, quitting cold turkey might not be the best way. And people really differ in whether they like to go cold turkey or not. Some people 
like to do the gradual approach. They like to wade into a cold swimming pool slowly from the shallow end. And some people like to dive into the deep end. So quitting cold turkey is fine if you have an abstaining type of personality. Um, I recommend getting lots of support um, because, you know, I have a whole program for people who are looking to quit sugar and we support each other quite intensively online. Um, and I think that, you know, my new book Resume goes into the details of a lot of this. There's a lot to it because you're gonna experience social pressure in your family and your mm -hmm. workplace. And so having friends who also don't eat sugar can help tremendously. I also recommend that people keep in mind that artificial sweetener will re-trigger you. So don't think that you can resort to diet sodas and things like that. It's really important to get the sweet taste buds um, detox from that extra sweet taste. Fresh fruit is fine, whole fresh fruit, but just avoid anything added to your food to make it sweeter. So really you're, you're just trying to retrain your palate and it takes practice. Mm -hmm. It absolutely takes practice, but this has just been so fascinating. I wanna thank you so much for joining us again. You're a two-time New York Times best-selling author. We do recommend our viewers to check out your book, Resume. I wanna thank you so much for joining us. We're back after this.